What's going on everybody? Welcome back to another exciting episode of The Comic Stand. Me and Spider-Man here, bringing you guys great comic book updates and opinions. Here we're going to be talking about the confirmed X-Force movie. I'm going to be giving you guys some facts and some little stuff they can use about how an X-Force movie can work. Since you guys love to hear me talk about how movie franchises and comic books can work. And I love to talk about comic books in front of you guys with the camera. See? I got the nerdness down, so we can talk about the comics all day if I have to. That's what this mess with this channel is here for, so thank you guys so much. But for an X Force movie, I feel like this movie needs to happen after X Men Apocalypse because we can establish both the time travel we would need for future movies and introduce Cable, Bishop, and Archangel. Those three characters are pivotal to X Force. Not that I want to see the Cable's X-Force scene in the X-Force movie, but we definitely need to have Archangel introduced. So I feel this movie should take place after the X-Men Apocalypse movie. At least that way, it went 2000, after, after 2016, something should have happened by then with Deadpool. Hopefully, or something, but that's for a sequel. I'll make a video about that later, but we're going to talk about our first X-Force movie. X-Force movie number one, after X-Men Apocalypse. This movie needs to be rated R. I am so serious about this. I am a huge fan of X-Force. I love X-Force and Uncanny X-Force like nobody's business. If this movie is not R-rated, you will turn off a lot of fans. Because they're called X-Force. They are the X-Men hit squad. They are the mutants that murder people. Murder people. You've got m killers on the team. Wolverine, X-23, Warpath. Eventually, Cable and Bishop and everybody else, Psylocke, they kill. They don't like to, they don't like to admit it, but they do kill. So blood and an R rating would be much appreciated. Then we can finally see Hugh Jackman go beast mode and murder everything. Because I feel he deserves that at this point. Because there's no PG-13 or anything else like that around this movie. It needs to be R. Uh, Cyclops... How they're going to do this is beyond me, but he knows that we need that there needs to be more permanent things done with certain enemies, and thus he forms X Force. Team members in this movie can basically with X Force they can kind of mix and match the team of sorts, but for sequel purposes, I feel like it'd be better if maybe they just kept the team as it was, except for this one. Uh, the team members can consist of Wolverine, Warpath, Wolfsbane. X-23, and Domino. Basically, I mentioned those five because Wolfsbane won't count. Because she'll be... I'll mention why she won't count, but it's basically the four of them, basically. Like I said, they can have a mixed match. The, the Purifiers are a great starting off organization to use since they can be used more than once, since their roster always increases and always changes with different characters. And, you know, let's just start out with the mysterious Matthew Reisman and Eli Bard the holy mercenary and the vampire that nearly killed an X, uh, an, an X Force member. That's how good he is. He nearly killed an X Force member. So that needs to be portrayed and that needs to be known because that's saying a lot. The skilled killers can always be beaten and that's saying a lot. Uh, with the Sentinels being introduced in the time traveling due to Days of Future Past, Eli's ability to reanimate corpses can be seen here and then obviously probably Bolivar Trask is going to die. So we can just bring him back and we can introduce other characters like Bastion and the Transmode virus allowing Bastion to control anybody else that he brings back or basically anybody that we get introduced into this movie. Or just basically say that he has control over whoever they bring into the picture anyway. Because it's Bastion, he's pretty damn annoying in X-Force so I say give it a shot and why not. Um, action and espionage are what this movie is going to really be about, and the thrive on and the violence, of course, but team and character building, Wolverine will be more mature since he's the leader of this team, and he's not only thinking about himself, he's thinking about the nature of his team, because granted, him and X-23 can regenerate, the other two people can't. So he still has lives to, to worry about in his hands. So there should be a more mature Wolverine, one who's a leader of his own faction of a team, and leading one like that. And he needs to be a leader in a sense of his reckless daughter, X-23, who's been trained to kill first and ask questions later. 
and they could argue a lot because that's what they did. You did reckless things, they might have gotten the job done by a stroke of luck, but you still have to listen to Wolverine because he's killed a lot longer than a lot of people have. Rain, aka Wolfsbane, would be introduced later on as a brainwashed double agent whose prime objective is to retrieve something important for her cause. For any of us that have read it, we already know what's going to go down, but I feel like Rain should be a double agent since she didn't really do anything in X-Force anyway, besides like the normal stuff. As X-Force is busy, Wolfsbane attacks Angel and nearly kills him until she's caught and they have a little fight beforehand and then she has what she needs and then she gets escorted to her escape. She has what she needs now and she goes off of that. We basically are introduced now to Elixir who is the team's healer who can heal Archangel but can't heal his wings because they're not something that can grow back. They're something that are naturally his. Meanwhile, with Meanwhile, at the Purifier's base, the Holy Warriors are being created, through the means that Wolfsbane got. The wings of the first angel, and X-Force, is busy fighting and slaughtering Purifiers, which leads to an awesome fight between Eli and X-23. In which we all read and we all know how that ends, but damn that was a good fight to be had. Our final battle between our Holy Warriors with fake wings isn't going to go well for our team. To kill as they must, and try as they must, they just keep coming until they get the upper hand by a very angry Archangel. Which is why this movie has to take place after Apocalypse. Because then they can reintroduce his Archangel side. He goes in, murders all of the clones, single-handedly, because he has his death abilities. So he goes in, murders them, Wolverine goes after Bastion. We all know what happens with that. And that's how that ends. Damn, this movie sounds perfect. I am... I am really glad I'm doing stuff like this. Because all that stuff is so great. And will be perfect for this movie. And our movie can end with Logan sitting with Cyclops. As basically the mission plays in his head. And they're sitting down. Basically the movie was played through his head as it happened. And it just so happens with Cyclops... Basically, the movie ends with Cyclops saying who's next. Basically. And a post credit scene can be shown as an unconscious angel is being healed by Elixir who has his wings. He can attach them on him. Elixir turns his back and Angel's natural wings are back on him. But they turn into the metallic wings of Archangel. And he turns blue and gets his claws. And Elixir turns around. And he sees all of this, and he transforms into Archangel, which starts to scare Elixir, and then he takes his hand and begins to choke him, and that's when the movie ends. That's when the post credit scene ends, because one of the great things about X-Force is that Archangel was able to revert back and forth. And that's something that's really fun. That was really great. It's one of the best things I loved about the whole X-Force, was that one scene. But that's how an X-Force movie can work. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you so much for tuning in to me and Spider-Man talk about everything. Don't forget to comment, rate, subscribe, and give me a big thumbs up if you agree with anything I said. I'm going to catch you guys next week for more of the comic stand. Always remember to geek out and enjoy your lives. And if you have any suggestions for anything, please don't hesitate to hit me up on Twitter. All of my links will be in the down bar. But thank you guys so much, and I'm going to catch you next week for more of the comic stand.